Well, welcome back on the AM show. We talk Galamse now and what Mr. President has been saying, ranging between 15 and 20 year terms for those found complicit and not shielding political actors. But what can we expect? Let's actually listen to what the president had to say on the back of illegal mining. Even though for centuries we have been a mining nation, mining did not pose a threat to the health of our environment and water bodies. The rules that you put in place for mining ensure that the sanctity of our lands remained intact and our water bodies remained unpolluted. Tragically, in the modern era, that is no longer the case. And that is why I've come to you today to talk about how together we can repair this dramatic situation. Since I took office on 7th January 2017, nearly six years ago, I have made it a central feature of my presidency to lead in the efforts to rid our country of this madness, which we all now call Galamse. Indeed, it was an important aspect of my inaugural address of that day. It has not been easy. It has not been popular. And we have not got the immediate results that I was looking for. My stance on the issue cost my party and I significant losses in the mining communities. It turned out that my statement that I was putting my presidency on the line in the fight against Galance was neither bombast nor recklessness. It was the simple truth. We have tried many initiatives, including that of the community mining scheme and the establishment of a new legal regime for dealing with the perpetrators of this phenomenon, which has imposed severe sanctions on those Ghanaians and foreigners convicted of illegal mining, still, we have not won the fight. And that was Mr. President uh, talking about what his administration would be doing. Engaging us on uh, this all-important matter, we have Inusaf Husseini, former Lands and Natural Resources Minister uh, we also have Dr. Steve uh, Manteyao joining the conversation. Gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Uh, Akapu, good morning. How are you? I am very well, uh, Mr. Fusini. Dr. Steve Manteyao, can you hear me? All right. It appears the feed to uh, Steve Manteyao uh, is experiencing some problems. We'll, we'll get in touch with him shortly. But Mr. Fusini, are, are you reassured? Are you given any comfort by the latest words of Mr. President? on the back of Galam Singh? There's no word which is comforting, or no sentence that is comforting and reassuring. In the statement made by the Excellency the President in Kumasi, in fact, it's just a regurgitation of what he has been saying. Mm. And, and what he has, what has been saying has led us to, to this despicable situation. And so, uh, he's not said, said anything new. Nothing absolutely new about what he's going to do. He's not being innovative in the fight against uh, illegal small scale mining. Worse still, he's not even punishing and holding people accountable for this uh, act of degradation of the environment and pollution of the water body. I mean, we are not seeing the president talk tough. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, so, what do I walk away with? I walk away with the feeling that it is the same old talk that he went to Kumasi to do. The president has called on uh, the traditional rulers, traditional leaders, to join him in this fight. And he says it cannot be done by government alone. We know that sometimes uh, some chiefs have been found to be complicit in this matter. Is that not a step in the right direction? Well, everybody knows, including his excellence, the president, who is a lawyer, he knows that what the state has is mineral rights. The minerals of the state are vested in the president for and behalf of the people. 
the state doesn't have the land. And so need, you need not tell the president that when you are fighting Kalamse, you need the owners of the land to partner you as the person in whom the constitution has reposed all minerals or vested all minerals in the state in you to be able to fight that. Because you need the land to be able to assess the minerals. And so if the chief says, no, I gave the land out to X, Y, Z to go and do farming activities, and they go, and which, is, which the, the, the chief can do, and they go to use the land for galamse or illegal mining, what do you do? And that is why you need the chiefs to partner you in the fight against small-scale mining. You don't only need the chiefs. And we have said it, and I've said it several times. And I'm sure the president has said, now look, you need the fringe community. The people who are directly bearing the brunt of the destruction of our water bodies and natural environment are the people who are living on the fringes of the areas that are doing the collapse. You need to recruit them. They need to be partners in the fight against small scale mining or illegal small scale mining. You need the Civic, uh, 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 civil society organizations, CSOs, who are interested in protecting the environment, they become your eyes and your ears because they are interested in protecting the environment irrespective of the person with authority who is destroying the environment. So you need them. You need them. You need, then you have your state actors. The DC. He's the highest political authority in the, in, the, in the district. Highest. He's the chairman of the DICEC. And you want me to believe, Mr. President, that all the destructions going on, your DC, your DCs have no clue as to who are involved? Then they, don't, they are not fit for purpose. Or oh, every district has a B and district BNI officer. Mr. President, are you sincerely... And do you believe sincerely that the district BNI polls is not aware of this security threat to the country and the people behind the security threat? Mr. President, policemen mount barriers and stop commercial vehicles, sometimes extort money from commercial vehicles. Mr. President, are you telling me that the policemen, when they see excavators moving to the, into the forest, the their suspicions are not raised. And what do they do to help in the fight against illegal small scale mining? The questions are many. Mr. President, you sponsored an act, an amendment to the Minerals and Mining Act, 703, which produced Act 959. In that act, you said a foreigner arrested for engaging in illegal small scale mining will be processed for court. And if convicted by the court, will serve the sentence before deportation. Mr. President, that law came into force before Aisha One was first arrested. And this was your handwork. This was your uh, proposal. Mr. President, what convinced you that monetary consideration for Ghana was better than putting Aisha One in jail? Mm. 838 chamfans, Mr. President, were found on River Office. 838. And no one claimed responsibility. No one was held re responsible and accountable. How can we try? It is a trust deficit in this fight against illegal small-scale mining. Mr. President, your ministers, your senior party officials are engaged in illegal small -scale. That is why this matter has gone beyond control. Because people see that those who are associated with government are mining. And they are mining with impunity. And the country is for all of us. And so they go into the land. If, you don't, if they declare your mother a witch, <coughs> you have to deal with your mother first before you get the legitimacy to deal with other witches. Mr. President, deal with your appointees first. That will give you legitimacy to deal with those who are not your appointees. Uh, Mr. President. Right. It, it, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because Mr. President spoke about, in fact, he warned that any of his appointees found to be involved in Galamse would not be spared. In, spared. in fact, he, he interacted with DCEs and warned them that 
Quote, it cannot be that the president at the national level is waging a war against Galamsi, and you, my representatives, are compromising that fight at the local level. That cannot work. I am not here to threaten anybody, but I want you to know that this is a struggle that I take very seriously, and I will not be in a position to protect anybody against whom evidence is massive to show complicity. I won't do it. How oh, do you react Mr. to that? Mr. President has all the evidence. I mean, I know the presidency. I know what information comes to the presidency. I was privileged to work as a cabinet minister. I know what information the president has. The president has chosen to pretend not to have that information. And so we'll continue to fight a losing battle. You're saying the president is pretending? In other words, he's saying one thing in the public space, but he knows better? Is that what you're, you're saying? You know, ah, the, my brother, Galamse is a security threat to this country. Galamse, you mean his minister of security has not briefed him on the extent of destruction to our natural environment? You mean the Minister for Agri has not briefed him on the repercussions Gramsci is having on our cocoa, that, 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 the financial backbone of this country? I, I don't think that is, that is just where it stops. We're talking about you know, political yes. actors, political so, actors you're, you're, involved. And he's saying if you're found and there's massive evidence to show that you are complicit, you will not be spared. I mean, he can't possibly know about everybody who is involved. Uh, who, Mr. President appointed. knows substantially. I mean, we didn't put a ham to dumpty in, in the, in the a flag tower house. Mr. President knows exactly who are engaged in small-scale mining. And I can tell you that Mr. President knows. And if he doesn't know, then I'm sorry. So some interesting bits there that you speak of. Uh, the President has also intimated that the fight is not going to be easy. It has not been popular. Uh, it may have even cost them votes in the last election, but they are going to pursue that fight. I have posed this question before about how many millions, tens of millions, if not hundreds, we've pumped into the fight against Galamse and whether we've got value for money. When the president says, this has actually cost us in terms of our electoral fortunes, he talks about some regions and how uh, maybe dwindling votes in there point to the fact that they've been fighting against the Galamse. Do you see that? Do you not see it? And if you don't, why? Benjamin, your uh, the line, the existing line is beeping. Have you stopped it? It's All beeping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I now, will. I will get right back to you. On no, it's okay. Season. It's okay now. Right. J just hold for me, though. Let me bring in Dr. Steve Manteau as well. Just hold for me, uh, Honorable Fuseni. Okay. All right. It appears we've, we've lost uh, Dr. Manteal as well. We'll try to reconnect with him. So the question I was posing, the president talks about the fact that the fight against Galamse has been that stiff and that while we may not have seen, I mean, like some people would suggest, uh, some of the outcomes that we want, they have done quite a lot to stem the tide of the menace, uh, to which point it may have even cost them in the 2020 elections. Any quick reactions to that? Well, uh, <laughs> now, first of all, <laughs> the president should know, and every Ghanaian knows, that the fight against illegal small-scale money is not going to be an easy fight. I mean, we have always known it. I was privileged uh, to serve as the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. It's not going to be easy. But all you need is commitment, dedication, focus, and singleness of purpose to be able to fight it. You see, after costing elections, I mean, it's neither here nor there. I mean, Galamse cannot single-handedly be said to uh, have cost the president elections. The president lost across the country. It was dramatic in Galamse areas, but he lost in force across the country. And so uh, it's neither here nor there. And in any right. case, if you say you are putting your presidency on the line, <laughs> what do you intend to do? What do you think the consequences will be? I mean, if you put your presidency on the line and fight Galamse and lose the presidency, I mean, you will leave a legacy. This, is a, this was the president who put his president on, a presidency on the line and fought the menace. And when he fought and succeeded, but lost the presidency, that would be what you will be remembered for. In any case, 
Why did they vote against Nana Kufado? They didn't vote against Nana Kufado because he was fighting Kalafse. I tell you, Benjamin Akwako, the people in the Galapse areas voted against MPP because they were MPP sympathizers who were doing Galapse. When the majority of the people under the banner of banning Galapse from 2017 to 2018 were engaged in, 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 in illegal small scale mining under the protection of the military. So the people felt hard done by. They said, look, we'll teach you a lesson. Ghana is not for you alone. You can't stop people from mining, including legal miners, and then you, your people, those close to your party, are engaged in illegal small-scale mining. If the people had seen the president to be fair, balanced in his approach, firm in his approach, they would have rewarded him with more votes. After all, the people who don't do Galamse are more than the people who do Galamse. Uh, on, uh, just hold for me. Let me bring in Dr. Steve Manteo, a policy analyst as well. Uh, Doc, good morning once more. Good morning. And uh, thank you for uh, your patience with us. I'd just like to find out from you on the latest uh, talk of fighting Galamse, as the president said in Kumasi yesterday. What, what is your quick reaction, your overview of what he, he had to share with us? Well, um, I, I think that I was pretty surprised by the, um, the turn in, in, in the strategy and the fight against um, Galante. I'm surprised because I, I think we all know we are heading for a crisis. And, and, and critical situations usually require resolute response. And in my honest view, uh, we have long passed the phase of moral suasion, which is what the president sought to deploy in, in his meetings with the chief and, and subsequently with the MMDC. Uh, for me, uh, this approach signifies um, some level of despondency on, on the part of a man, a, a leader, so to say, who is glued with enormous power and resources. We have the army, the military, the national security, all the state security apparatus and resources at his disposal to deal with this menace. Um, um, and for me, it was not for nothing that we amended Act 703 to provide for safer sanctions for illegal mining activities. And yet, uh, with, I don't have any knowledge of we applying the law, which actually provides for up to between 20 to 25 years imprisonment. Uh, let me make the point that, in my view, the president was actually talking to corporate in this illegal activity. Um, and I say so because uh, between 2008 and 2018, 10-year period, Ghana received enormous support, over 100,000, 100 million U.S. dollars to fight illegality in the mining and, and the forestry sector in this country. And over this, that period, the pro end of project evaluation indicates that uh, illegality in mining more than doubled. So, which means If that you could just quote that figure again for me. How much did you mention again? Over 100 million U.S. dollars was invested under the Natural Resource and Environmental Governance Program um, implemented between 2008 and 2018. There was an initial phase, 2008 to 2013, and then it was extended further for another five years, so a total of 10 years. We sank this money to curb illegality in mining and forestry and to improve environmental governance in this country. But illegality in the two sectors more than double. And according to the end of project evaluation report, and I happen to have joined an international panel to review that report. And the report concluded that the reason illegality in mining and forestry more than double was as a result of vested interest. That those close with the power to deal with the menace were themselves the perpetrators 
they were either direct perpetrators or beneficiaries of the illegal activity. And this included the Nananum, the chief, the district assembly, I mean the MMDC, and also staff of the Minerals Commission and other state agencies, including even the police. So we, I mean, if we were to go by that report alone, and if we take report seriously in this country, we have a clear indication as to how to tackle the problem. You tackle the problem head on and take on the people who are broke with power to deal with the problem. You don't go vacating them the way the president sought to do yesterday. And I keep saying that, look, the day a chief is arrested for complicity in mining and put behind bars, all chiefs in this country will set up. The day an MMPC is removed from office put before the law and put behind bars, all MMPC would be up to the task. They will actually live up to expectation. So if all we are going to do is to be kind of um, uh, uh, deploying um, um, dialogue at this time, then I, 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 I bet... I, I beg to say that we have long gone that, past that phase. We are actually at a phase that requires resolute action, resolute response. And that is why I agree with Occupy Ghana when they, are call, when they call for um, um, a state of emergency. Mm. Uh, the president is now calling on the chiefs. Uh, of course, that call has been made in the past, but he's asking them to work hand in glove with him uh, to stem the tide of Galamsey. It's not a new call, but what do you think will, will be generated from this, uh, this latest uh, call much. upon uh, Nananu? See, if, if the chiefs are beneficiaries of the illegal activity in the catchment area, I mean, it becomes very difficult to get them to support your fight using moral suasion. Mm. I, I, I mean, money has a very, uh, what you call, corrosive effect on good governance. You expect people to actually support you to better manage the environment and all that. But the people you expect to help you are benefiting. Mm. So the only way is to apply the law. Look, when we arrest illegal miners, those we arrest, those uh, miserable boys that we arrest, are not the people who are, who are actually uh, directly uh, engaged in the activity. Right. They are proxies. So if we are minded to interrogate them, to investigate for them, for God's sake, we have a national security, PNI, and, uh, and a lot of state security agencies in this country that can undertake such investigation. Mm. And then we arrest the perpetrator. But sometimes I think there's so, even so much pretend because... We do know. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure the president must have seen um, um, this party in Antica video, which was shot in the office of uh, uh, Professor Primpon Watten when he was in charge of the Environment Ministry. Right. If the president says he has not seen that video, then we must disband our national security apparatus. Mm. Then they are not working. So if you have seen a video justifying why we should commit illegality, flout laws, and mine illegally in this country. And this video involves your party people and your appointed minister, and you do nothing about it. What signal are you sending to the rest of us? That signal is, is the question. But when it comes to the political elements, Mr. President says uh, he's seeking the assistance of Nananum and others to take partisan political interest out of the fight against Galamsey. In fact, he spoke specifically to DCEs, telling them that if they were found to be complicit in any way, and if there was massive evidence to that effect, they would not be shielded. Uh, is that any comfort, knowing, for example, what we know about some of uh, those entities that are tied to this ruling administration, Akunta Mining and others, and the fact that some of them are even in our forest reserves? You, you, you see, when you have party people, and not just, not just ordinary party people, but powerful party 
element involved in this illegal activity. Clearly, Nananumu will be powerless in, in actually uh, dealing with them. Um, Nananumu do not control the state security apparatus. It is the president who actually controls them. And if I were the president, rather than to appeal to Nananumu to help, I would deploy the national security and all the uh, powers um, at, at my behest to all the areas, in fact, the first step you do, and I, um, I, I want to emphasize that, you declare a state of emergency in those areas and deploy your heavy security into those areas and ensure that either Nananom or MMCC, everybody involved, will actually go by the dictate of your declaration of state of emergency. And that's the way to deal with the problem resolutely. Let, let me come back to Inusa Fuseini. You've been listening to Dr. Steve Manteal share his own uh, thoughts. And on the political tangent, there are others who have also been pointed uh, to. For example, uh, there is that audio recording of the DCE for Bosome uh, Yao Dansu, uh, implicating him in illegal mining. It is the, the, the banner headline of the Daily Guide newspaper this morning. Now, uh, we've also been told that this person has lost his wife, and so while he had been summoned by the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, uh, that has been stayed. When it comes to the fight against Galamsi from the political end, are we doing enough? Is it enough for Mr. President to say this? What more can we do? Because I feel, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel that is where the biggest problem lies. Well, it appears that we are almost coming to our wit's end. Mm. And uh, we seem not to have too much confidence in this government's ability to be able to stop the fight, in view of the fact that many of its actors and supporters, key party functionaries, ministers of state and appointees, are engaged in this activity. And the report of the national... That's a natural resource governance uh, uh, project. Clearly, it indicates what we say or what we are saying. Because when the key actors get involved and nothing is done to punish them and send a signal, then everybody thinks that, well, this government is not serious. And so people who were waiting to see will not jump into the fray and, and start their illegal activities. When soldiers provide Security. I mean, you remember Amewu? When Amewu started the fight in earnest, and then got the reports that soldiers were providing security cover for in the I mean in, in the night for people to continue to engage in illegal small scale mining, he made the matter public. The defense minister rallied to the defense of the soldiers and promised the people of Ghana that he was going to set up a committee. To investigate that. What has come out of the investigation? And we're still here report. That is why I am a, a little bit skeptical about this Occupy Ghana's declaration of state of emergency. Because who are going to be those who will be policing the state of emergency? The state cannot be everywhere. The soldiers cannot be everywhere. And that is why, with the greatest respect to doctor, I think that we should be looking at the community rights issue, as happens in Australia, in New Zealand, and many other jurisdictions, which will enhance the power of the community to say, no, you can't do small-scale mining here. Yes, we agree that the president holds the, the minerals in the, in, the, in the land for and in trust for and on behalf of the people of this country. But communities must be able to say, yes, we are part of the people of this country. But we say that we, we prioritize the environment more than the mineral. So we are not going to allow the mining activities in our community. Let's enhance community rights so that people can, can, first of all, have a legal right to refuse to allow mining to take place in their communities and to, to stand up, use self-help to fight off those who want to get, engage in small-scale mining. But if we become passive citizens, and rely solely on the state apparatus, we might be disappointed. Uh, Dr. Manteau, we shouldn't become passive citizens, but the government machinery 
holds our power, the power to stem the tide of this. The president is calling on the chiefs and all and sundry, basically. Uh, what, what then do we do moving forward? He says, political elements will not be shielded. Traditional rulers are meant to come on board. What then do we do moving forward? What's happening, political um, um, elements involved in illegal mining are being shielded. And we, the evidence takes away. Um, we've had enormous evidence from video footages and all that. And not the national security, not the, uh, what do you call it, the police service. Not, none of our uh, state investigative bodies have even done anything about any of these. Uh, and so it leads all of us into a certain state of despondency. Uh, let me say that, uh, Honorable Inusa, uh, it's not as easy as, as you say in terms of, um, 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 what do you call it? Uh, um, engaging and, and promoting community rights because you know a lot of the communities have already been enticed into these activities, and so they even are likely to shield the the miners uh, because they are direct beneficiaries. Um, I led a team um, from the um, when I chaired the PIAC, I led a team to Atangewa on our project inspection tour, and, uh, and the people at that time the, the president had actually instituted a moratorium on mining. And, and the community people were actually complaining bitterly that business is down, the miners have left the town. A lot of them said um, they, they, they are children with these, some of these miners, and they've abandoned them with their, their children and all that, and nobody's taking care of the children. So you have a situation where the community members themselves have become complicit. And that is why I, I want to say that it takes only strict enforcement of law to keep this. Um, let me also say that Incidentally, and I'm pretty sure you may be aware, during the period when the president actually imposed a moratorium <coughs> on all mining activities in the country, I mean, small scale mining activities in the country, that was the year Ghana produced the most uh, gold from the ASM sector. So what was happening? People were providing cover for party people to mine and then creating the, the impression that no mining was going on. So it requires sincerity on the part of the president and his appointees and the security agencies to care the money. Otherwise, we are all pretending, and by the time we realize, this country will be a non-viable country for all of us to live in. Uh, even as we talk about the way forward, so when you, when you look at the directive that look, if you're found complicit, you'll get between 15 and 20 years, uh, th and that is non-negotiable. Is it a stiff penalty enough? In the past, people have said that the penalties are simply not stiff enough. Is this the way to go? For me, it is not simply the number of years that you, you, you actually stipulate in law, 20 years, 25 years. It is the strict application of the law. And when people are actually arrested, it is important in terms of government communication around this issue. It is important that we keep a focus <coughs> on what happened to those who have been arrested, how they are uh, investigated, how they are brought before uh, the judges, and, and the sanctions that are meted to them. This, that is what will deter people. So it is not just stipulating in law that you go to jail for 25 years. If you have that in the law and nobody goes to jail over a period, it will not deter any people from going to illegal activity. Let's see a heavyweight, a party chairman or a party general secretary or a chief being brought before the law and being put before that. All of us will fall in line. Uh, let me come to you, Inusa Fuseni, on, on same. I mean, moving forward and looking at the president's directive that people found complicit should get between 15 and 20 years. Stiff a penalty enough? And what, what else should we be doing moving forward? So in fighting a menace, in fighting an illegality, in trying to restore sanity, you need a cocktail of measures. You need a cocktail of measures. You can... You can, you can box yourself into silos. So mm. you have the law. So the law was amended. And made, uh, punishment made stiffer. Uh, there, is, there is stop the fight? No. Has any people prosecuted under the law? No. Even when there was opportunity to prosecute people under the law, we choose to prosecute those, those people under uh, fraud by false pretenses. 
Uh, clearly, uh, uh, when there was evidence that somebody was manning the forest reserve and, and, and so was committing illegality, we chose, we chose to warn that person to stay off instead of arresting that person. And so, yes, you can amend the law and, 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 and keep them on the status quo. And nothing happened. And then you can always go and say that I've amended the law to get To what people? Now, I say a cocktail of mergers because I seriously believe, and well, I will not take anything away from what Dr. Mantillo has said. That the end, indeed, when I was a uh, land minister and we were able to remove a lot of foreigners from the site, uh, from the mining site, they did complain. This same complaint were the complaints we had at uh, Tumpa on the face. The same complaint, and when you go in and read a report by a uh, citizen of South Africa, the same complaint. But it doesn't justify those activities. The complaints don't justify the fact that uh, we, we should continue to engage in small scale mining. It's more anonymous. Hello, Mr. Fusaini. We, we, we seem to be losing your connection, Mr. Fusaini. Can you hear me? Well, it appears uh, the, the connection to Mr. Fusaini uh, is not so good right now. We'll try to uh, get him back for his final take. Dr. Manteo, so moving forward, uh, yes, we've explored, but what, what are some of the things that you would like to see in the immediate term, especially as the presidency uh, has come out now to say, uh, look, we want you to work hand in glove with us so that we stem the tide of Galamsey. What are the things you want to see in the next few months before the year ends and maybe by the start of next year to, see, to, to, to ensure that some action really is being brought to bear? Well, first and foremost, I think um, government developed uh, a master plan um, 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 in, in trying to deal with this problem. And, and, and to this end, um, we as a country uh, uh, have received some financing from the World Bank um, uh, involving uh, multiple agencies in the sector to try to pair the minutes. Um, we want to see how we implement this master plan and we want periodic updates in terms of what progress we are making. But on matters of um, criminality, I mean, those who are complicit in these activities and all that, I think in most of the um, window dressing, we need to get more serious and we need to impose um, people criminally liable when they actually flout the rules. And, and what we need to actually set examples. It is only the example that I keep emphasizing. It's only example that will deter people. If I know there will be no consequences for my flouting of the rules, on, on, on illegal mining, then of course I will be emboldened to engage in it. So going forward, I think we want to see more action than, than, than the talk. More action than talk. Dr. Mantea, we're grateful that you took the time to join us. And that is Dr. Steve Mantea, a, a policy analyst. Uh, Mr. Fusaini, we lost you at a point. You could just go back to the, the thoughts you were sharing at the tail end of your submission and then give us uh, conclusively. So Moving forward, in the next few months, what do we do to make the talk work? Well, I was just saying that you, see, you, you need a cocktail of measures. But at the helm of the cocktail of measures, a primary responsibility is the enforcement of the laws of the country. That's the primary responsibility. That's mm. a solemn oath the president took. And we must hold him by the solemn oath to enforce the laws of the country. Now, enforcing the law is holding people accountable. If people have been found to be complicit in illegal force scale mining, hold them accountable. The, the fact that you are holding them accountable will serve as a deterrent to people who are thinking of getting into the, uh, the, the activity. We need less talk and more action. Less talk and more action. And in fact, uh, Dr. Manteya says, and it's true, that between 2017 and 2018, when there was total ban on oil scale mining, Ghana exported the highest quantity of gold from the small scale mining sector, 2 million ounces. 
the World Bank, uh, the Bank of Ghana put it at ten billion dollars. Ten billion dollars. How did that happen? How did that happen? So let's begin to hold people accountable. Let the security do their work. They go behind people and and try to understand how they are, what activities they are engaging and whether they are they are they are breaking the laws of the country. Let's recruit members to tell us who and who are engaged in illegal sports scale mining. Let's hold the Minerals Commission responsible because they are giving the leases and closing their eyes and refusing to monitor the mining site. And then we might be getting somewhere. And then we might be getting somewhere. We're grateful for your time, uh, Inusa Fusaini. Thank you for joining the conversation. And that's a former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. Of course, the conversation continues. And in the coming days, weeks, and months, we'll find out whether the talk will actually walk as far as the presidency has put out there. We take a breather. When we return, more action on the AM show. Stay.